I'll always remember my first freelance client very, very fondly. I had no freelancing experience, no testimonials, no portfolio, and this fearless dude named Topher, obviously with no trust issues, actually took a chance on little old me. He literally had no reason to hire the 2016 inexperienced version of me, but he did for some reason anyway. So that was six years ago when I was a fresh out of college, risk averse child who decided to jump ship from a bright looking corporate career for the uncertainty and chaos of freelancing. So since then I've worked with over 40 plus freelance clients in all types of industries, making my big scary dream of freelancing true. Don't know why my hands are up here. And it all started with that first client, Topher. That one client paying me my first dollar to validate to myself that this alternative path was actually realistic and possible and to validate validate this idea to me and my wallet, most importantly. So in this video, let's talk about how to find and land your Topher, your first client as a freelancer. We're going to chat through six ways so that you too can land your very first freelance client, even without online work experience under your digital belt. Hey, my name is Dea, freelancer, digital business manager, most recently and as always, you can find sections on the play bar below if you want to skip to a certain part of the video. Your time is precious, so take what you need. And if you want to watch this on 2x or 1.5x or 1.75x, I will not be offended in the least. You can find that in the bottom right corner. Okay, let's dive into the video. Now, before we dive into the six ways, you will need somewhat of a general idea of what you want to offer as a freelancer. It doesn't need to be super specific. I'm in the anti-niching when you first begin freelancing club. But Dea, where do I even start? I don't have any technical skills. No technical skills under your belt, my friend. I have been there. So here's what to do. Instead of focusing on technical skill set or experience, instead offer your time doing small general admin tasks that business owners need done, but don't have the time to do themselves. Businesses just need extra time a lot of the time. <laughs> so offer your time and offer your capability to figure it out and use G-O-O-G-L-E. That's what I did. I just offered my time to help clients with sorting photos, organizing blog posts, making book templates, using Canva, all those things you can easily figure out via Google. Now, if you are on the opposite end of the spectrum and you can offer more technical skills like graphic design, copywriting, or digital business management, know that business owners will drool all over their keyboards for you. So slap two or three of your best portfolio samples together Spruce up your resume and you will be ready to rumble. And remember, right now, we're just taking that first small step into freelancing to prove to yourself that you can actually do this, that it's viable. Imperfect action beats perfect inaction every single day of the week. And this is coming from a certified perfectionist. Your method to get clients does not have to be set in stone. As you gain more and more online experience, you'll use other tactics to add more clients to your roster. How you land your first three freelance clients is probably not how you will land clients 10 through 20. I've got a video that walks through where I found my 40 plus freelance clients that I'll link in the top right corner that walks through that journey a little in case you're curious. But really right now, the focus is just to land that first client and validate freelancing. All right, now let's dive into the six ways. I debated talking about Upwork because I have 483 thoughts about Upwork now, but six years ago, it is honestly how I landed my first freelance client. If you are not familiar with Upwork, it's essentially an online platform where freelancers can find online gigs. When you work over the Upwork platform, they take a percentage of your income. Other platforms you can also check out are Fiverr, People Pay People. I've also heard great things about a new platform called Contra. I'll link everything below. Because I was a complete stranger to the online world in 2016, again, no network, no testimony, no nothing. I went on Upwork because I didn't know where else to go. And I went there just to be like, what's going on in the world of freelancing? Now, although Upwork gets a bad rap now, and I have mixed feelings about it now, I think it can be a really good option for new freelancers dipping their toes into the online world pool. Upwork is kind of a gathering of everyone looking for freelancers and everyone looking for freelance gigs from the simplest tasks like data entry to more specialized ones like website building. So if you wanna give this a try, here's what to do. Sign up for a free Upwork account create a profile that oozes your professionalism. <laughs> that was a hard word. Oozes professionalism. Use a nice clear picture of you and be sure your writing is spick and span and error free. You will be surprised how many people have humongous spelling errors and grammar errors in their Upwork profile. Use Grammarly to avoid awkward grammar mistakes. Then create a few great relevant samples to show off your skills and start submitting proposals for gigs you'd like to do. Now here's a quick warning. As a newbie freelancer, you have to be prepared for lower rates as you're just getting started, but draw the line 
at selling yourself short or working with any bottom feeders. And beware of scams. If a gig seems too good to be true, it probably is. If someone is willing to hire you without an interview or the pay is too high for the work needed, don't walk, run, dash, sprint, hopscotch away. You might not make big bucks on Upwork, but that's okay. This is just a way to validate the idea of becoming a freelancer by booking one single client and this client acquisition method does not need to last forever if you don't want it to. Idea two is to check with your family and friends, any past contacts, if you have any, ask around if anyone has a small one-time project they would like for you to help with. When it comes to inner circle networking, we tend to underestimate how many people we actually know. You might not need to look any further than your literal backyard. It's easier to get your first client among the people you already know as they already have that no like trust factor with you. So it's easier to convince them to give you a shot or, you know, hopefully they do. And yeah, I know, I know you're hesitant to tell others, you're embarrassed, you're afraid they'll say no. My best advice is to do your best to ignore that voice. While I absolutely understand being nervous to tell others, see this as an opportunity to grow. Putting yourself out there is an uncomfortable thing, but if you're not willing to do slightly uncomfortable things, this journey will be way trickier and more time intensive than it actually needs to be. So really challenge yourself to step out of your comfort zone by telling just one person. That can be your challenge. For this week, just tell one person, then go to two, then three, go slow, right? So to start, you can pick one family or friend member and let them know that you're giving freelancing a try and ask them if they know anyone that could use your skills for a one-time project. Give examples of what you can help with, super important. Or you can reach out to one past coworker and or manager and don't leave anybody out. You never know who could use your services. And now most importantly, do not just say, I'm a freelancer now, what do you need help with, right? give examples of a few things you could see them needing help with like hey i noticed you started a nail business and that you aren't active on instagram i'd love to help you create an instagram strategy as i think your business would do really well on instagram would that be interesting for you let's chat right don't make them think about how they could use you or how they could work with you think for them do the work for them so it's easy for them to picture you helping them and it's easy for them to say yes to give those business owners an extra push to choose your services, offer them a discounted rate or a beta round or a couple hours of free work in exchange for a referral or testimonial. They'll start singing your praises to other business owners sooner than later. Using your mouth can be the best and easiest way to get that first client. And you might not get just your first client, but also your second and third and fourth and fifth as everybody tells everybody else about how awesome you are. Again, don't worry about sustainability of a client acquisition method when you're just getting started. The point is not to land all your clients in this way. It's just meant to get you going and get momentum actually happening. Idea three is to look up a few local businesses that you love. So when looking for that first client of yours, Google can be your best friend. Googling local businesses that you would love to work with that could benefit from your services might feel less scary than just venturing into the wild unknown, right? You can even go visit them, make a more personal connection that helps build trust. Do you have a favorite cafe where you enjoy hanging out with your friends? Could you help them set up a simple website? Could you help them with designing a few Canva templates for their Instagram? Could you help them set up an email list or the gym in your neighborhood where you spent, where I spend 20 minutes a week walking on the treadmill, calling myself out? You know them and they know you. All perfect potential first clients. Be their ruthless online stalker. Do your research, visit their website, social media accounts, see what needs improvement, what they could use help with. Find out what potential pain points are and how you your skills could address those, pitch them the solution to their problem in a helpful, honest, authentic, and valuable way. The very act of being proactive will make a great impression on those local business owners. So Google a few local businesses, if this is the method you wanna try and put on that problem solving hat and see where you could be useful for them. Idea four is to browse job boards. Another way to get your first freelance client is to browse job boards targeted at people wanting to work online. It saves you the hassle of putting yourself out there via cold pitching. You know, if reaching out to businesses on your own gives you a little bit of a major headache, online sites have already vetted it, the, vetted the businesses placing the job postings so that freelancers applying for them don't fall prey to scammers. But just like with Upwork, always watch out for red flags that screams like scam from a mile away. But yeah, there are tons of online job boards like freelancing females, we work remotely, I love dynamite jobs, flex jobs, to name just a few. I'll link them all below. My biggest tip here is do not be picky if you are just getting started. 
Sometimes I talk to people who are like almost talking themselves out of applying to every job that they come across. And I get it because I used to do that too. And for me personally, that was a way that fear of failure manifested itself. I would be like, I shouldn't apply because they mentioned they need two years of experience and I only have one and a half years. Or I don't really like the way they spell color in that job description. And I would do that to protect myself from getting rejected, but that's not healthy. That's not a healthy way to grow. You're also doing yourself a huge disservice. So don't look for the perfect gig when you're just getting started. Just look to apply to anything that sounds interesting. You can be picky later, right? Don't worry about fulfilling all the requirements either. Get in the rhythm and routine of applying, add it to your daily schedule. I have honestly been rejected every which way as a freelancer. Trust me, it's normal. It builds resilience and that cheesy saying goes like you learn more when you fail faster. So challenge yourself to fail. Challenge yourself to get rejected because if you're getting rejected, high five. That means you're out there trying and that's more than many people can say. And if you're getting rejected a lot, <laughs> I've got a video on how I handled that too. Linked in top right corner. Idea five is to beta test your service in a community. If you love scrolling through your Facebook news feed, I have got news for you. You can join Facebook groups where your potential clients hang out and offer them your services. This is a great way that allows you to be helpful in a non-salesy way and beta test your offer, which I always recommend. It's how business owners get to know you, like you, trust you enough to become that first freelance client. So scour Facebook for groups where your dream clients hang out. If you are a digital business manager for business coaches, look for business coaching groups or where business coaches would join to learn from other peers. Read through the group rules. Often you're allowed to promote your services in specific threads only and on certain days only. So make sure to follow the group rules. Be helpful, be consistent, show up, and avoid going for the sale right from the get-go. That's like my biggest tip. It does take time and patience to find potential clients in Facebook groups, but it's really worth it because you build relationships first by offering value to potential clients. And when you establish yourself as an expert in your field, eventually people will start tagging you and reaching out to you and asking for your services, which is awesome. So go join those Facebook groups and start offering help to businesses. I have got an entire detailed video about my Facebook group client acquisition strategy. That is a long phrase that I'll link in the top right corner right here. <laughs> Idea six is to do a short free internship to get experience and a testimonial. Sometimes it is best to start with something lower risk for both you and the client, like starting with an internship, whether that is paid or free. Internships are a fantastic way, if they're the right internships, to get experience, build a portfolio and get a testimonial in exchange for your work, plus maybe some referrals. So here are my four rules on internships. One. The internship should not be longer than three months total. I want you to learn not to be taken advantage of. Two, set clear expectations and boundaries with your client. What will you do? What won't you do? What will they teach you or train you in? What will you learn? What will you get out of this most importantly? Three, get a testimonial from them. Make sure it's clear you're looking for a testimonial at the end of the internship. And four, make sure to ask them to refer you to any other businesses at the end. And you can also kind of be strategic about the client that you choose to do an internship for and just double check that they have a cool network or if they're in a mastermind group full of other people you want to work with. That can be a really great way to get an in into that group of potentially a sea of clients that want to work with you. Okay, here are three final tips for finding your first freelance client. Number one is to do a one-time project as your first gig instead of taking on ongoing work. I highly recommend this because you wanna get your feet wet and try as many things as you can in the beginning instead of over committing to something before you're sure you'll like it. So I highly recommend doing a one-time project. Second tip, work hard, okay? And I know that's kind of like, duh, dea, but like, do your best to deliver like really dazzling results when you're just getting obviously like as you go on to but like in the beginning make sure you try your best to over deliver it will make everything that follows so much easier like referrals testimonials everything's going to be easier if you just really over deliver in the beginning i have a whole video about the top soft skills freelancers should bring to the table if they want to get booked out i'll link it in the you guessed it top left corner jk it's in the top right corner and of course tip three don't let your self-doubt, fear, failure, perfectionism, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all those voices hold you back from trying to get that first client. Okay, just begin. I promise this doesn't have to be the huge mountain, the huge leap that you're imagining in your head. This can just be like a tiny, tiny, teeny, this big step to test it out. See this 
trying to get the first freelance client as an experiment, try to have fun with it. I know it's intimidating. I, I remember like trying to land my first client like it was literally yesterday. I know it's intimidating, but just try to take that small, small step, small next step. Don't worry about the big mountain. Don't worry about making it a full-time sustainable thing. Just start with the first step because if I hadn't started with Topher, I would be in a completely different place in my life and I'm scared to think where 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 I could be. <laughs> if you're serious about landing that first client, comment below which method you're going to try first this week so we can hold you accountable to take that first step. As always, thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Okay, bye.